welcome. Thank you for choosing to listen to this spirit-filled word by David Entry. When you catch a word, you have caught God. May you catch a word today that will cause God to change your story. Be blessed. Take your Bible, let me show you something. Luke chapter 2. Thank you, Jesus. Luke chapter 2, verse 10. We will all read it out loud together. Doesn't matter your version. Let's, let's go. And the angel said unto them, Fear not. Behold, I bring you good of great joy, which shall be to all people. Why did he say they shouldn't fear? The angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you. I stand in front of you, and I'm telling you, I'm bringing you good tidings. Yeah. Whose Bible uses different word from tidings? Tidings. Yes, what does it say? Good news. So what is tidings? News. Tidings are news. Or it's news. So when he said, I bring you good tidings. I bring you good news. Proverbs 25, 25 talks about cold water. Proverbs 25, 25, it says that. Let's all read it together. Let's go. As cold water to the thirsty soul. So it's good news for, from a far, far country. Now, as, let's read it again. As cold water. So it's good news from. We want to pray a prayer. That. That's, that's what God laid on my heart as I prayed this afternoon into the evening for the service. He said, Tell my people that there's good news coming. You shall share your testimony very soon. You shall hear good tidings. You shall hear good tidings. You shall hear good tidings. Somebody asked you why are you rejoicing? Because tell them, tell them because good news is coming. They say, How do you know? He said, I, I, I've, been, I've been to the house of God and a prophet has spoken. And then they roll their eyes at you. You to roll your own. If they roll it clockwise, do your own anti clockwise. <laughs> he says, Oh, yeah. And be confident. Watch what I'm saying. Watch what I'm saying. I didn't, I didn't go and eat and then concoct something. Peter said these things are not made up. I didn't make them up. And I'm telling you, God spoke to me. He said, tell my people good news is coming. Some of you, your own will be as early as before the end of this month. Some of you, yours will be as early as the beginning of next week. Good news is coming to you. Good news is coming to you. Good news is coming to you. I see it running after you. I see it coming towards you. I see good news coming. Good news is coming. Shout good news. It's coming my way. Now. We're just doing this. Mm-hmm. We're, 
you are just doing this. Stop it. Good news is coming. <laughs> we are just doing it. But by the time you realize, somebody said, oh, last Friday the testimony came. As we were shouting the testimony came. How can you explain that by science? No. It's beyond the realm of science. It's beyond the realm of science. It's called the mysteries of the kingdom. We practice some things and we see the results. Why are we keeping doing these things? Because we keep seeing the results. We pray and things happen. We fast and things happen. We gather and things happen. The good news is people's testimonies are being birthed. Good news is coming your way. 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 Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. Receive it now. In the name of Jesus. Shout a believing amen. Did we read the Proverbs? Yeah, it's a good news from a far country. Um, ask cold water to a thirsty soul so it's good news from F. see the way when you are thirsty what you want is some, some water you need and some of us are, your destiny is just thirsty for good news some of you are anticipating have been, you have been waiting and when, 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 when will I hear when will I hear that the donkeys have been found? When will I hear that it has been the contract has been approved? When will I when will I hear that the marriage has been approved by my in-laws? When, when will I hear that the date has been set? When will I hear? When will I hear that my my wife is pregnant? When when will I hear that I'm pregnant? When will I hear? That my business has now employed 100 people and more. When, when will I hear that my status has been granted permanently? When, when we, so some of us, we keep When I was talking to a guy um, recently who went through a lot health wise, I think there was pain somewhere in the arm or terrible. He had to do some surgery and he was telling me for the first time in his life, he knew what it feels like to be pain free. He said he had never experienced it for a long time. Pain upon pain. And painkillers upon painkillers. Until he finished the surgery. And then he said, wow. It feels so good not to be in pain. Some of us, you are in pains. You are asking, when will I? When will I have relief? When will I have all clear from the doctors? Every time they, they, they are coming up with something new. But I, I am here as an angel. The Bible said, an angel appeared to them and he said, Behold, lo, behold, I bring you good news. I bring you good news. God said, I should tell somebody, good news is coming to you. Good news is coming to you. Before we pray, let me just advise somebody. When you see someone shouting the amen, it's not shouting it for you. If you don't want it, no problem. It doesn't affect the one who wants it. So, open your heart and claim it. And receive it. He said, Behold, be not afraid, for I bring you good tidings of great joy. Some news when you heard, wow, that's okay. But others when you heard, wow! Good tidings of great joy. <laughs> you shall hear good tidings of great joy. You shall hear good tidings of great joy. You shall hear good tidings of great joy. Every, every
every meaningful thing of the spirit is voice activated. And they heard the voice of the Lord in the cool of the day walking in the garden. It wasn't God. His voice was coming. His voice was coming. Genesis chapter 3. They heard the, the voice of the Lord walking in the cool of the day. When God wants to visit you, the word must become flesh. Somebody must take the word and contextualize into your case. It's into your case. Yeah, that's why he says that how good are the feet of those who carry good news? Because, you see, as I stand here and I speak, something is released into me in the air. The scriptures talk about how um, Exodus 33 verse 4 or so, the people had evil news and they mourn. Mm -hmm. they, nothing has happened to them. What they had made them mourn. Mm -hmm. That's why it's good to have good news of great joy. Mm -hmm. They had evil news and it made the, it, they mourn. The people mourn. In Psalm 112 verse 7, it says that um, his heart is, he shall not be afraid of evil tidings. Because his heart is fixed, trusting the Lord. Read it. Psalm 112 verse 7. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. Say, I will not be afraid of evil tidings. <laughs> Say it like you mean it. I will not be afraid of evil tidings. Say it again. Prophesy to your life. I will not be afraid of. Prophesy it again. I will not be afraid of. You must learn to speak back God's word. Speak into your situation. Introduce God's word into the condition. Introduce it into your situation. I will not be afraid of evil tidings. Why? Because his heart is fixed. Trust in the Lord. In Nahum chapter 1 verse 15, it talks about how, uh, how pleasant are the feet of those who carry good news. Carry good news. Nahum 115. Behold on the mountains the feet of him who bring good tidings. Oh, 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 oh. Who proclaims peace. O Judah, keep oh, Judah. your appointed feasts. Perform your vows, for the wicked ones shall no more pass who through you. Who proclaims peace is bringing good tidings. I bring good tidings to you. Yeah. And he speaks about good tidings in, in Zion and in Jerusalem. Isaiah 40 verse 9. Thank you, Jesus. Isaiah 40 verse 9. O Zion, you who bring good tidings. Oh, who, who brings good tidings? Oh, who brings good tidings? Zion is the house of God. The church of God. Once you are here, you shall hear good tidings. I just, I just know that you have stepped into a new season. You go to university. You enroll on a course. Three years, four years, five years, six years, seven years, whatever the years. You, you enroll on a course. Let, let's say it's three years. First year second year, third year, you finish, you, you write your exam or submit your dissertation, whatever, and you passed. Watch, 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 watch this. When you finish that course, you, you are not the same as the one who began. No. You're, now you can start using the certificate to look for better jobs. Yeah. Better jobs. You leave the Tesco um, till. And then you, get, you apply to the management to get into management. And then you, they see your certificate. So when someone graduates, it's not, yeah, you may look, it may look the same, but something has changed. The things that he can, he can do, the things, the opportunities around his life has changed. And in the realm of the spirit, in spiritual things, atmospheres like this is like graduation. 
Didn't, didn't Samuel tell Saul, I have anointed you. But as you move from here, you meet some people. Then you meet another person. Then you meet a company of prophets. And the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and you prophesy to them. And he said, and you become another man. Yeah. After that incident, the story of Saul changed. He didn't just prophesy and get up the same. No. By the time he prophesied with them, he has become another man. He was a ruler. David was taking care of sheep. They, they, they called him, come, we need you in the house because a prophet has come. He said, God said he should come and anoint a king. And in, uh, in 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13, when David came, Bible says that God told so Samuel, that's the one, anoint him. He poured the oil on him and he anointed him. Bible says, and the spirit of the Lord came, watch this, watch this. And what happened? And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day from forward. That, watch this. Not from the day before. But from that day, just oil that was, you might think it is just oil, but it's not on oil. It says that from that day forward, the lion that ate, that attempted to eat his sheep should have come before the oil came on him. The, the bear that came after the sheep should have come before the oil. Goliath should have come before the oil. His brothers told him, you are not to go back home. He said, is there not a cause? They didn't know that the oil has started producing. The oil. Hey. So, Bible says that, and oh, from, say, from that day forward, from, you can win an election, but until, they swear you in. You are still the same person. But from the day they swear you in, whether people like it or not, you are the one in charge. From that day now. In a few moments, I want to drop something in your spirit. Because in Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 4, it says that the just shall live by his faith. In Romans chapter 1, verse 17, it says the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3, 11, the just shall live by faith. Hebrews 10, 38, the just shall live by faith. Right? Four times in scripture. How do you live? You live by faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7, you remember? For we walk by faith. Others walk by sight. But we walk by faith. So what happens to you if you are walking by faith and your faith is gone? You can't make movement. But you are walking by faith. Can you imagine that your car, those of us who, have, who use fuel or whatever power, electric power, if your, uh, your phone, it works by um, three bars, four bars, or two bars, or something like that, yeah. Connectivity. When you lose connectivity, it's like underground some places. So that's what me, and you say, no, the, the phone is not good. The, but there's no connectivity where you are. You have gone to Jamaica, and the, 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 there's no coverage there for your particular network. And you are complaining that, no, this is not right. This is, I bought this phone, very expensive phone. Listen, listen, it's not how expensive the phone is. Coverage. Wow. Whether it can connect is more important. Wow. Coverage. Phone, cell phones, they work by connectivity. But it doesn't matter how expensive the phone is. Those of you who have been on the plane before, you realize that you don't have phone reception. Recently, when I was traveling and I was from Qatar, I wanted to send my daughter some pictures. But you have to take them quickly before, because when we were taxiing, I was telling you. And I took some pictures and I sent them, but I lost connectivity. So whilst we were in there, you know, what's up? You can tell the thing didn't go. Not a tick. This one it didn't go at all. It failed to go. So I said, oh, we've, we've taken off. We will arrive. And then when we landed, it went. But it, the time, it's bad timing. So it doesn't matter how expensive and powerful the phone is. Or when I went, it wasn't doing anything. 
The best is sometimes you, you might pay for Wi-Fi there. But even that is not reliable. But you can't get cellular connection. Because phones, cell, that's why in America they normally call them cell phones. Because it operates by cellular, cellular connectivity. Now, so that phone, it, it operates and it thrives by cellular connectivity. In the same way, for you to be a Christian and enjoying goodies from above, it says that the just shall live by faith. You shall live by faith. So anything that attacks your faith is attacking your connectivity. You can be shouting and singing, show your power. All that is like a very expensive phone, but no connectivity. No connectivity. The just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. If there's something you can't go low on, it's your faith. It's your faith that will determine what God can do in your life. It's your faith. We are saved by faith. We walk by faith. The Bible says that we stand by faith. You are standing by faith. And then it says that above all, he said, no, he said that, uh, sorry, he said, and taking the shield of faith, by which you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the devil. Let him throw his words. You have faith to stop it. It's a shield. Yeah. Your faith is your shield. That's why Jesus said, and they said, Master, don't you care we are perishing? We are perishing. We are perishing. Mark chapter 4. We are perishing. We are perishing. We are perishing. And Jesus said, where's your faith? Where's your faith? And in Luke chapter 8, where's your faith? He said, oh, you have little faith. When you have faith, you'll be, you'll be cool. So what you should be doing more is rebuilding your faith. Because when your faith is built up, your prayer is solid. Every little prayer you make is powerful. Yeah. Every little prayer is loaded with potency. But if you don't have faith, you'll be screaming, Ah! 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 Oh no! Oh no! You two, why are you not listening to me? Oh no! You see, you see, your faith is, is all over the place. No faith. He said, and the prayer of faith shall make the sick person well. James chapter 5. Verse 14 and 15. He said, and the prayer of faith shall make the sick person well. Then he says that pray fervently. So he said, for Elijah was a man with like passions. In other words, he used to fear, he used to worry, he used to like food. So Elijah was no different. But he said he has like passions. Do you know what passions? I don't know what your passions are, but Elijah had like passions. <laughs> Elijah has, Elijah has like passions. Like passions. But he prayed earnestly that it would not rain and it would not rain. Because Elijah was known to be a man of faith. Bible talks about now faith is the substance of things hopeful. The evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Every genuine testimony is a child of faith. Bible talks about it this way in Galatians, that they that be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. If you are in the faith realm, you are operating in the realm of Abraham. Yeah. So the blessings Abraham enjoyed automatically begins to replicate in your life. Why? Because they that be of a Galatians chapter at three, I think verse seven, eight, nine, somewhere there. They that be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Or some translations said, are blessed with believing Abraham. Yeah. Read it. Galatians chapter three, verse nine. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Who are blessed with believing Abraham? Those. Those what? I can't hear you. I can't hear you. said, those that be of faith. So let's say this man is of faith. This man is not of faith. This man is not of faith. No, no, I just, <laughs> illustration, okay? Yeah. I know you have a lot of it. <laughs> it says that those who are of faith, okay, you let me use you. Come. 
Abraham walked with God. And Abraham is a figure in the Bible. It's a unique figure in the Bible. So if, if you are, for you to be classified as Jew, you must come from Abraham. Other than that, you are not part of God's people. I mean, that, that has how significant. If you are not from Abraham, you are not part of God's people. So Abraham is such a powerful guy. And he says that, those, do you have faith? Ah, he's of faith. Then whatever blessing was working for Abraham is also working in you. He's not of faith. He's, he's not working in the realm. So unbelievers can't claim what we claim. They can be in the gathering we are in, but they can't claim what we claim. Because what we claim is on the grounds of faith. So he said, they that be, are you of faith? They that be of faith. Read it again. So then, those who are of faith are blessed with belief in Abraham. They were, so when Abraham was being blessed, he wasn't the only one who was blessed. He was blessed together with everyone who is of faith. So there's already a blessing waiting for you to step in when you are of faith. I said there's a blessing waiting for you to step in. You are of faith. When you are of faith, when you are a man of faith, when you are a woman of faith, there's already blessing ready for you to walk in. Walk in. My pastor, I've been believing, I don't see anything. If that statement makes me know that you are not really believing. Because when you are believing, you know that it is already on, on you with time. Somebody says, I'm pregnant. I'm pregnant. And after two weeks, he is he's, he's worried. What, what's the problem? My tummy is not out. Oh. Yes. You, are, you are six weeks pregnant. So you notice that after the one month. And then, so six weeks pregnant. Or you just say, you tested pregnant pussy six weeks. So after two weeks now, it's four, uh, eight weeks pregnant. And you are worried. You can't sleep. You are losing pace. Because, oh, the baby is not there. Tell me, tell me, tell me, where are you? Tell me. Then you see some pregnant woman. And then suddenly you get worried. Why is the, my, no, my own is not there? What's, what's wrong with you? It's a matter of time now. You're pregnant. Haven't you tested positive? You have. So once you have tested positive and you've gone to the hospital, they've confirmed it. In fact, they can hear the heartbeat of the child. Don't worry, don't worry. There are church members who come to me. They say, Pastor. I'm pregnant, and we rejoice. But ma many people don't know in the church. It takes a long time after about four months. Some people, their own doesn't even show till after about seven months. Yeah. Yeah. But the truth is, somebody who has tested positive, pregnancy has done the pre and you know you are positive, don't be worried. And some people say, oh, babe, there's no baby. Leave them alone. They have not done the test. You have done the test. And you have gone to the hospital. Don't, don't mind them. Just keep walking. Just, it's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. It's a matter of time. And you'll be carrying your baby. Your baby will be crying. Yeah! Yeah! So when you begin to say that my faith, and Pastor, I've been believing is not coming, it's, um, it begin to question, put a doubt on the kind of belief. Because faith is never disappointed. Faith is, not will be, not was. Faith is. This now, faith is. Not faith was. Not faith will be. Faith is. What is it? It's the substance of things hoped for. The evidence, the positive test. The positive test. Somebody was coughing. <coughs> and so, hey. And he sneezes. Now there's, uh, were you the one who said the baby shot? So now there's when you, post, when you people sneeze, no one says, bless you. They just say, hey. <laughs> Come on, no <run> trouble. <laughs> take, they take cover. But you were sneezing. <laughs> and then you do uh, uh, the other one. Uh, the last traffic flow. Negative. PCR, negative. 
You, you see the way I'm sitting, you go to hospital, they do thorough check, negative. Listen, you don't have to worry. Because you've done the test, you just, it's a little cough or a little sneeze. It doesn't mean you have coronavirus. In the same way, so faith is the substance, the evidence. So it doesn't matter what you are seeing, you already have the medical, the sand. Oh, oh, oh! Wait, 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 wait. You know what I just, I just noticed in my spirit? Faith is scientific. Because scientific is proof, evidence. Ah! Yes, yes. So those who say faith against science, they don't know what they are talking about. Faith is science in another realm. <laughs> Faith, somebody's faith is rising. Somebody's faith is rising. Somebody's faith is rising. Shout Lord, I believe. Now, the good news. The good tidings that are coming. So somebody asked you, how was church? Tell them good news is coming. Uh, Tell them good news is coming. Tell them. They say, when is it coming? Tomorrow. I'll tell them very soon. Tell them, get ready. Jesus said, I'm coming soon. He hasn't come. 2000. So don't worry about that. It's coming. It's coming. Good news is coming. Good news is coming. Good news is coming. Good news is coming. So, if the just shall live by faith, that means that we have to get what faith is. Because you need it. What, what is this faith? The Bible says faith is the substance. But I want to give you a, 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 a more simplified definition of faith. Faith, what many people have not understand, understood, is that faith is a reaction. Say reaction. reaction. The other time, Archbishop spoke about reaction. Actions and reactions. Those of you who are a bit scientific or who did basic, basic science, particularly physics, you know one of the laws of physics talks about Newton's law of what? Is it motion? Third law of motion. Yeah. Action and reaction are equal and opposite. So when I, I hit you, <laughs> no, the, the, the force that hits you will, re, will receive a, an equal reaction for the same force. Action and reaction are equal. You can't have reaction without an action. So then if faith is an action, sorry, it's a reaction, what is the action? What is the action? Because without an action, you can't have a reaction. Or you can't have a reaction without an action. So if faith is a reaction, then there must be a triggering corresponding action, which is a force that triggers faith. What is it? Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word. So what is faith? Faith is a positive reaction to the, the word of God. Positive. What does that mean? God said, "Good news is coming." What's your? What does it mean to react positively? Yes, yes. You haven't seen it, but you know. Once the word has said it, you know. You receive it. Yes, yes. It's it's as simple as that. So faith is not. Hmm, uh, what should I do? Okay, let me think about something. Let me think about that. Say, 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 say something. Say something. Say something. I, 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 I bet the EF. No, no, that's not good. And, uh, A for antelope. B for, uh, uh, for God so loved the world. Listen, 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 listen. Abraham, when he was a man of faith, he had he was living in idolatry, and a word came from God first. You can't believe if God hasn't said. You can't have faith when there's not been a word. There must be a word for you to have faith, because faith is a reaction. And the good news is, listen to what I'm about, that's a stronger one. The good news is, the word of God, when it comes to you, it has the propensity of giving you a corresponding reaction. So the word comes to you and it, it, 
the word itself provokes a certain reaction inside you. So that said, it's, it's, it's a gift of God. So that no man can boast. So when the word of God comes to you and it hits your spirit, there's something it does to you. But, so it takes actually a, dis, a, a heart of disobedience after you hear the word of God not to react in faith. That's why God doesn't take disobedience lightly. Because you had the opportunity to act in faith. You had it. You sat in that atmosphere. And you knew that what the pastor is saying, there's something inside for me. You knew it. Something was coming to me. But I said, oh, all these things. Me, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to. So you switch off. When the word came to you, and the word was provoking a reaction inside you. And so you switch off, and you switch God off. You turn him off. And he leaves you alone. He said, handle your own matter. Then he goes to sit down, waiting for the next available believer to act. God can act on anybody's behalf, even when there's no faith. The Bible said, when Jesus saw their faith, he said, son, rise up, your sins are forgiven. It made Jesus say what will bring controversy, by how to say it. When Jesus said, woman, oh thou great is thy faith, Matthew chapter um, 16 or 15, 26. He said, oh woman, great is thy faith. Great is thy faith. When the woman said, even the dogs. Jesus said, I'm not ready to heal. He says, the woman said, even the dogs. He said, oh woman, great is thy faith. And in Mark, Mark chapter 5, verse 34, Jesus told the woman with the issue of blood. He said, daughter, be of good cheer. You have, you have, you have faith. Your faith. Your faith. Your faith. Your faith. Jesus of Nazareth. Mark chapter 10 from verse 44 down, 46 down. Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Jesus, thou son of David. Jesus, people shut, shut out. You are making too much of blind Bartimaeus. Bible said he shouted the more. Jesus, and Jesus stood or he stopped and he said, call him for me. And he threw away his garment. He ran and came. Jesus didn't pray for him. I was surprised. Jesus just told him, gave him good news, announced. He said, your faith has healed you. Is there anybody here with faith at all? I announce to you your faith that delivered your testimony. Your faith has made you well. Amen. Your faith. Two blind men, they followed him. As he entered the house, they were following him from the street. Jesus, Jesus, blind people. How can a blind man follow somebody? Oh, it must take a certain level of faith. We don't care. They are going, then they, they hit something. Then they realize, oh no, he's here. Then they, blind man. He said, oh no, you, blind man, he was going. But they followed Jesus. When Jesus entered the house, they also came there. They said, Lord. Jesus said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, that we might see. I, will, uh, well, I have our side back. Matthew chapter 9, then verse 29. Jesus said, hey, read it, verse 29. Matthew chapter 9, verse 29. See what Jesus said. Then he touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith. According to what? Your faith. It's his power that healed them, but he said, According to your faith. Your faith has provoked my power. Your faith has engaged my power. Your faith has triggered my power. Tonight I'm telling you, your faith. Your faith. Your faith. Your faith is working for you. Your faith is speaking for you. Your faith is delivering for you. Your faith is moving you forward. said be it unto you their faith says that they are destiny so doesn't make sense when he said the judge shall live by faith these few days last three days left for this fasting please don't just be an ordinary person be a woman of faith listen defy the odds I found out in scriptures that they started walking by faith right after Adam fell. 
Adam's, Adam's first son was the first person, according to the record of scripture, who operated by faith. And this was the righteous seed of God. Bible said by faith, Abel offered, ah, Abel. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice. Ah, and as though it wasn't enough. He said, after Abel offered, he says then, then uh, Enoch came on the, on the scene. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 5. He said, Enoch, by faith, Enoch walked with God and he was no more. And the Bible said, the Bible said but before he was taken, he was, why was he no more? Because God took him. It's there in your Bible. He said, by faith, Enoch walked with God and he was no more because he was taken. And the Bible, why was he taken? But the Bible said, before he was taken, he had the record that he pleased God. That, that, that's what made him God taken. They were, God was working with him. Come, sir. They were working with him. This is your house. Wait, 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 wait. This is your house. This is my house. Let's assume I'm God. And God, the guy was working with God. You know, when you're working, when your children are working with adults, sometimes they have to work faster. So working with God will be a lot of work. Because he has long legs. Yeah. So don't think working with God is cheap. It will cost you something. But go on, go on, go on. He was, he was working with God. He was taking stroll with God. And then they got somewhere. So oh, you have to go home. You know, like sometimes you're on the phone with somebody you love. And it's late. So bye. He said, no, bye. And then he ends up, uh, uh, no, he came to visit you. She didn't go. Then he spent the night there. Because now it's 3 a.m. Okay, just sleep early morning, wake up and go to work. So they, 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 <laughs> they, work, they work with God. And they go to a place. God said, ah, my house is closer than your house. It's longer to your house than to our. Okay, then let's go home then. And the Bible says, by faith, this guy did it. He walked with God and he was no more. And Bible says that he did not see death. Only the, the only human being who didn't see death before all those prophets like Moses and Elijah, Elijah and then Jesus. The only even Jesus saw death because Bible says in, in um, Genesis chapter five, and they lived and died. They lived and died. They lived and died. They lived and died. Everybody lives and died. They lived and died. They lived and died. Remember Toledo, Toledo. They lived and died. They lived and died. But it got to his turn. He lived and he did not see death because God has taken him. So now Hebrews tells us how it happened. And Hebrews says that before he was taken, he had the record that he pleased God. Then Hebrews interjects and says that, but we know without faith, it is impossible to please God. So his pleasing God had faith under it. Oh, I feel like preaching. We know without faith, his pleasing God had faith under it. And so he's been corrupted, he's been taken, was a, a clear instrumental cause of faith. Faith. Where is your faith? 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 I dare put it to you. Where is your faith? All this noise, thinking you are a Christian. Where is your faith? Because they just live by faith. Where is your faith? You live like ordinary people and that's why you are a victim of what ordinary people are victims of. When you live by faith, you are living in a different realm. Jesus said, all things are possible to him that believeth. As soon as you believe, you, you change your realm. You are not in the realm of ordinary human beings. Where's your faith? You've come to church, but you are watching. Hey! Don't do that! The last four days, not next, but next three days, be determined that you are, you are moving in a different level of faith. And to make it simple for you, we have a word tonight that good news is coming. I bring you good news of great joy. I bring you good tidings of great joy. I bring you good tidings of great joy. So shall it be. So shall it be. So what, so what you got to do? As you going? Engage your faith based on that word. 
Good news is coming. Good news is coming. Good news is coming. Good news. Is coming. Ah, they ask you, how are you? Good news is coming. How are you? Those here don't believe you. I say, how are you? They have overtaken those here. How are you? I believe there's more power here. How are you? And they stop you and they say, how are you? Thank you for listening to this message by David Entry. When God speaks, works show. And the works will surely show in your life. To hear more from David Entry, follow him on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn, and subscribe to Caris Church on YouTube. Don't forget to share and subscribe to our podcast so you're always up to date. Be blessed.